Hello and welcome back to another episode of Souffle Art where we continue our week of poor paintings. Today we're looking at a demonstration between swipe techniques. Recently you may have noticed there's been a new swipe technique going around where people use a wet paper towel. This one is not wet yet, but it will be when we get ready to demonstrate. Now, what's the difference between using a wet paper towel versus an actual spreading tool designed specifically for spreading liquid. Well, the difference in this is it's very rigid and it has a heavier weight, which means when it lands on the paint, it's more likely to press further into the paint, which can result in scraping, at which point you're more removing paint from your surface than actually encouraging it to kind of interweave, which results in those spider web cells that are so intricate and interesting. Now, Despite being a little heavier and despite requiring a little greater degree of control and practice to really get working, the benefit of using a spreader tool like this for a swipe is that you have complete control over where you do it. You have a small or a very wide surface area in which you can choose to swipe things and pull your paint and encourage it and create different effects. With a wet paper towel, you lose that control because you either have one of these little two by two or a shape you cut out or one of those full large paper towels and you just have to let it go and pull the whole thing at once in a single direction because if you don't the other things are going to get messy really quickly so even though it's a lot easier to use thanks to the large flat shape and uniform weight which is lighter and is more effective at simply trailing across the paint without being too forceful in mushing the colors of paint together. A wet paper towel can give you greater ease in swiping the paint, but you do lose control over how much motion you can add to your swipe. And as I was looking at these two, I was thinking to myself, well, what other options are there? What else can I do? How else can I express myself with my art and push my boundaries? And I thought, if we're going to bother with these two things that everybody's seen, a swipe and a wet paper towel, we might as well try a couple other things. So I'm going to go with a spoon swipe. And I have some of these little craft feathers. So I'm going to go grab a couple of these out. Now this may seem a little random, this may seem a little off the cuff, but I promise there was some thinking behind this. One is, as you move the bottom of a spoon, as you look directly down on it, it looks like it's this wide. But if you flip it over, the surface that touches the ground is actually very small and narrow. So even if you were to take the spoon and lay it directly on the surface as you were to do a swipe, you would be doing a very small surface area in reality and the wake as the paint spreads along both sides of the spoon the wake might create an interesting effect so I want to see how that works with our swipe and if worse comes to worse I can turn the spoon just a little bit and we have a larger surface area that'll be more similar to doing a standard swipe or even using a popsicle stick so we always have a backup plan if the spoon doesn't work out the feather, I was thinking, is going to be similar to a wet paper towel in that it's very light and it's going to be nearly impossible for us to take a feather and blend the paint together, but the little ridges, the little pieces of hair or feather that come off of the actual spine of the feather itself are enough to grab the paint and collect it and keep moving it and encourage it. So it'll be the benefit of a paper towel and the benefit of a spreader tool where we get very light, very consistent swiping, but we also have so much more control because we have a smaller surface area and it's more mobile. We can do more with this. Heck, it's even curved a little bit like a spoon, so this might be the ultimate spreading technique. We're going to find out in a second, but first I need to set these off to the side. I have my work area protected with some wax paper, just a little frog tape simply so I could tape two pieces together and give us a larger work surface. And now I just need to take this paper towel and make it wet. And there it is, easier said than done. Why do we need a wet paper towel? Simply because a wet paper towel is going to be more mm, obedient and more useful in the application we need 
A wet paper towel is not going to have the same starchiness and rigidity that a paper towel does. So if I need to go and drag this, a paper towel is going to try and keep its own shape, which is going to make the paint behave in a weird way. Whereas a wet paper towel is going to hit the sides, it's going to hit the edges of our paint, and it's just going to stay exactly like that as we drag it. So that's why it's a wet paper towel and not just any paper surface, right? Let's get the paint set up for the swipe and then we're gonna start looking at the methods themselves. All right, so first things first with a wet paper towel, the goal is gonna to be to match the size of your swipe the most, most closely with the most relevant size of your paper towel. For example, I would use this size if I were to swipe it down this way, but I'm going to be swiping from the black forward, so I'm using this size because this side is more similar to the amount of paint I need. This is how we maintain control and make sure we're swiping it well. So I'm going to lay it down and just kind of drag it. You can see right off the bat we still have such a huge section of black paint right as we start because the wet paper towel has not blended it into the base. But pay attention because if you see this area right here, this little section, the paper towel did suck up a lot of black paint actually which is why there's so little paint left over here and that is another one of the disadvantages of working with the wet paper towel swipe is if you're working on a canvas if you're working on a canvas let's say you start your paint here if you start the wet paper towel and you pull it forward this little edge here is most likely going to get some of the paint sucked straight off the canvas you're going to end up with a very thin area here and you're going to need some extra paint at the end to retouch it and just kind of cover up the spot that the paper towel took out. So keep that in mind while you work with this technique. Okay, and to be fair, I'm gonna use a little butane torch here because some people like to work with that a lot. And I want everybody to see exactly what it would look like if they were trying it at home. A few extra cells. Remember, we're also not using silicone because silicone is absolutely not necessary when you're working with the swipe. It can create extra results, but I kind of like the spiderweb look, so I usually don't use silicone in my swipes. Next up, we're going to use our spreader tool. And where I spilled my nacho cheese over here on the side, I'm going to do the swipe with this greater portion. And uh, we got a little showy at the end, kind of dragging the paint around, giving it a swoosh. Uh, to demonstrate again that you have a much greater degree of control with a spreader swipe. Mm -hmm. And you can see that we actually have similar initial results between the spreader and the paper towel. And that's simply because I've had the practice. I've had enough time to get exactly the right weight that I need to move my spreader tool without... Mm, squishing the paint down too much. You can see it's a little warpy here. That's an effect of the wax paper directly on our work surface. It's just kind of bubbling up, but the actual look of the paint cells themselves is very similar. And same thing, just a couple quick little little bubbles popping up. Nothing crazy. Let's try out our spoon. Look at that. That's pretty much exactly what we predicted, isn't it? We have this wake in the middle where it pulled the swiping color, the color we're using to drag through our others, and it created a kind of wake. We have this ripply, this very 70s looking effect. That was the center, just at the lightest point of the spoon. So let's try the other option we discussed where we can use the flatter edge to do more of a, a standard swipe. I 
I like it. I really do. I'm gonna, I think I might just have to do more videos on a spoon swipe because I really love this. It's almost like you're looking at a piece of agate or some precious mineral where they have these kind of sedentary layers pressed over each other. It looks very natural and I'm really in love with this style. Let me know what you think of the spoon. It's actually very much similar to the paper towel and the spreader but you can see there are very distinct differences in what kind of results you'll get. And lastly, let's check out some feather swipes. I don't anticipate I'll be able to wipe much paint off of this. And I have just this little pack of cleaned feathers from a craft store. It was very cheap, so it, it doesn't hurt to uh, burn through a couple extras. Let's see how this goes. Now, if you'll notice with the feather, we have some areas like this with the very first swipe, which is no longer present, but with this last swipe, the feather is so extremely sensitive at picking up the paint and dragging it that it barely blends at all. And in fact, it takes up so little pigment that the black along this side of our feather swipe, the black pigment can't even fall through because so little black pigment was picked up in the first place. So it's just floating there, just floating there on top of the paint without sinking through and creating those cells. It does look like you might end up with some interesting patterns on your feathers. That might be an interesting craft idea for later if you go with this method. This one too has some real interesting paint look. This might be a fun method to try if not for the swipe then for the colors you'll get on the feathers afterwards could be a really interesting upcycling project just make sure that if you're working with uh, wild feathers uh, upcycled or reclaimed feathers that you clean them properly because you don't want to get any of the nastiness that can come with untreated feathers so what do you think we've taken a look at our paper towel swipe we've looked at the standard spreader swipe complete with extra nacho cheese on the side we have a spoon swipe which is absolutely my favorite from the experiment and we have a feather slight feather swipe which has its own pros and cons compared to the other three well let me know because this is on my desk i won't be able to save these skins i need to clean this up because i have work tomorrow but i hope you've enjoyed looking at it so far and as always, thank you so much for watching. It really does mean the world to me. I hope it's been interesting, enjoyable, entertaining, all that nonsense. Thank you very much. This is Souffle Art.